Hello guys, welcome to another Python video tutorial with Pygame. In today's episode, I will introduce the sprites to represent the enemies and also the player himself. The sprites I'm using here are PNG images with transparency that have smaller images for different enemy orientations and animations. As Pygame has many functions to manipulate images, I chose to draw the sprites with them. This way it simplifies things a bit. That is, I first brought the floor and the walls to a frame and only then I start to draw the sprites, being a totally independent process. The only problem is that we can't draw sprites partially hidden by walls, so sometimes it happens that they pop in and out on the edges of walls, but that's not a big deal. My starting point here is going to be the ray casting maze game I made in the last video, which in turn was built on top of the floor casting I showed in the previous video, and if you haven't watched them, maybe you should. I'm not actually going to start with ray casting. To do the first tests, I will use floor casting, so I don't need to worry about walls for now, and I will free the mouse to move the sprite. So to start I will import a sprite I sketched here. I know, it is a piece of art, but rest assured I will only use it for the first tests. To see if everything is working right, I will draw the sprite in the current mouse position, so it follows the pointer. The first thing I'm going to see here is the sprite scaling, which is according to the depth. The scaling works the same way as the height of the walls. The bigger the distance, the smaller the scale. Here on the screen we have a depth relation that increases as you get closer to the horizon line. So I will calculate a scale factor for the sprite according to the distance between the pointer and the middle line of the window and multiply it by the original sprite size, which I get from the get size function. Then transform the sprite to the new size and then display it. I will also subtract half of the sprite size so it is centered on the pointer. As you can see as the pointer gets closer to the horizon the sprites get smaller, as if it was moving away. This is the basis of the scaling. Now I'm going to position this sprite inside the map. But to be able to draw the sprite I need some information. First I need to know if it is inside the player's field of view, because if it isn't I won't draw it. For this I need to calculate the enemy angle in relation to the player's position and then subtract the player's rotation. If the result is within the range of minus 30 to 30 degrees, then we can go to the next step, which is to calculate the distance to the player in order to resize and position the sprite. The scale is simply the inverse of the distance, but I will limit it to values up to 2 so as not to stretch the sprite too much. And I will also add the fish eye correction, dividing by the cosine of the angle that we just calculated. The vertical position is half the window's vertical resolution, plus one half multiplied by the scale. Then I still have to subtract half of the height of the resized sprite. This depends on the sprite you are using. Usually we have some empty pixels at the bottom. In my case I added a reflection, so the enemy feet are always in the middle of the sprite. For the horizontal position I will take half of the horizontal resolution and subtract the sine of the angle multiplied by the vertical resolution. Then you also have to subtract half of the width of the resized sprite. And this way we have a sprite positioned in the world. To do it for more sprites you just have to have an array with all the positions and check each one of them to draw. But we didn't consider one important thing, the order of the sprites. This way some of the more distant enemies are drawn over the closer ones. So first of all I'm going to add in the array spaces for the distance and angles of each enemy. Then I make a loop to calculate these angles and distances in each frame. But as I want the closest enemies to be drawn last, I will keep the inverse of the distance. And that already serves as the scaling factor. For the cases where the angle is not in the field of view, I will set a big value. After everything is calculated, I will sort the array based on those scale values and iterate over them to draw the sprites. When I reach those big values that are outside the field of view, I will interrupt the loop. Ok, for floor casting this already works, but what if we have walls blocking some of the sprites? Now we can transfer everything we have done here to the ray casting game. I will take the code from where I left off in the last video. 
Now after calculating the distance from the enemy to the player, I will call a ray that goes from the enemy to the player. If before reaching the player the ray hits a wall, I will put a big value on the scale so it doesn't get drawn. We could stop here if we wanted to, but looking at those sprites and all of them looking straight at the camera all the time, it's pretty weird. So I decided to add some rotation to the sprites. That means the enemy sprites changes depending on the direction he is looking. And I have also added a simple animation for the enemies, because I found this sprite sheet at Open Game Art. I just made some modifications to add reflections and shadows. But we have a problem here. All sprites are in the same image. We could separate them each one in a file, but this is too much work. What I'm going to use here is the Pygames functionality to create subsurface. So I created a function to load these sprites. First it loads the file and then it goes through all the positions creating the subsurfaces and putting them in a multi-dimensional list. In one axis we have the animations and in the other we have the directions for each monster type. But now we have more characteristics to consider in each sprite. So instead of creating this array at the beginning, I will create a function to spawn the enemies. The function is very simple, it generates random positions for the enemies, tests to see if the position is valid to not generate enemies inside walls. It also provides spaces to store the relative orientation of the enemy, inverse of the distance and angle in relation to the player, as well as the type, if it is a zombie or a skeleton, absolute orientation and its size. In the end, I'll transform everything into an array and send it back to the main function. Since we are in the functions mode, I will pass the sorting part to a specific function. And here, after calculating the enemy angle on the player's view, I will calculate the relative direction between the enemy and the player, to know where he is looking at, and I will transform it into a value from 0 to 3 that will be used to draw the sprite afterwards. The rest of the function remains the same. I will decorate the function with ngit so that we have a speed up with number. It doesn't make much difference when you don't have many enemies, but it is nice. Now I will also create a function to draw the sprites. For the function I will pass the surface I generated with ray casting, the list of sprites, the array of enemies, the size of a sprite, the resolution of the frame and a time parameter. This chicks is related to the absolute time. It is used to iterate over the animation frames of the sprites. When I'm iterating over all the enemies I'm going to draw, I also have to get the sprite's type and direction. And in the scaling part I will multiply it by the size I defined for the enemy in the spawn function. And now something a little different. Instead of drawing in the frame transformed to the full resolution, I will draw it in the original resolution that it was rendered by the raycaster. I'm going to do that because the performance is much better this way, because we are drawing smaller sprites. We just need to make some adjustments here to use the frame resolution as a reference when calculating the position where each sprite will be drawn. Then we return the surface to the main function to transform to the full resolution and display it in the window. Very well, we have the enemies animated now with four directions, but they are all stuck in place. So I added a very simple logic of movement in the function to order the enemies. They always try to move forward and if they hit a wall, they stop and change direction. And now they are walking freely through the maze. We can check if their direction is coherent with their movement and everything seems to be right. But we can't interact with the enemies, they don't even know we are here. Then I decided to draw a sprite of a sword, to be able to attack enemies. This one I made myself. And to make the movement of the swing of the sword, I used the perspective tool in the GIMP image editor. Then back to the sprite loading function, I will load the sword image and also divide it into subsurfaces and place it in a list. Here at the end I will repeat the intermediate frame to make the animation a little smoother. Also I will define a variable that keeps track of the current frame of the sword and then return everything to the main function. 
Then I will pass the list of sprites and the current sprite of the sword to the sprite's drawing function. Before drawing I will calculate the position for the sword that depends on time, to give a sensation that the sword is swinging in the player's hands. Now back to the main function I need to implement the logic to use the sword. First up here in the events part, if a mouse click event occurs and the sword frame is less than 1, I will change its value to 1. Down here after drawing the sprites, I will check if the sword was activated and run the animation, adding a small value depending on the time that has passed between frames. This way we already have the sword's animation, but it is not interacting with the enemies yet. To interact I have to know which is the closest enemy. And I already have this in the part here where I drew the frames, because I have interrupted the loop after the closest enemy. I just need to return that value to the main function. With this value I first check if the sword's frame is equal to 1 and the enemy's distance is lesser than 1 and greater than 0.1. If so, I send that enemy to the position x equal to 0, so it won't be drawn anymore because it is inside a wall. I also added a counter to control how many enemies is still on the map. As you can see, they still don't do anything. They don't attack or run away from the player. That's because we still lack a very important thing, intelligence. But I will leave this subject for the next video, so this one doesn't get too long. So if you want to follow the development of this project and other stuff that will come, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, leave a like, but if you don't, leave a dislike before YouTube removes this function. And that's all folks. Codes, textures and sprites you will find on my GitHub. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.